Hello, we're going to do some live coding today. Um, I've been looking at the Boost Beast HTTP and General Web Socket library um, to header own implementation, though it does need the system lib including in the program. And I need to learn about this. I need. To, I want something to do about this. And this is the first example of that. This is the fast server uh, that they provide as their example code. Now. I don't like code looking like this, so I'm going to try and start learning about Boost Beast by working that code into my own coding standard. Loads it into my wetware so I know what I'm doing. Let's begin. So the first thing I've got is a folder which I've called Boost Beast. It's one of my development drives and we're going to download Boost, the latest version of Boost. Um, I'll actually get the zip version for ease for Windows. So then while that's downloading, let's create a new project and we'll make it C++, we'll make it empty project and we'll put it in the right place, server project. And so we're creating an empty solution, there they are, server proj, that's where my project files are going to live inside there, but my source files are going to live in there, and I'm going to put boost in a separate folder there as well. Let's just tidy up the project, so properties, and we want to go to linker, and input, sorry general, and then we're going to go back a level to boost stage lib. That's where boost will be put and, and, and everything will be. Um, in fact, it will probably be, no, that'll be fine. We'll make sure it, we'll rename it, okay? Now, the input I'll leave for a moment. We'll see what it is. We'll apply that. And now we need to add at least one file. And it's gonna be main.cpp. Okay, and it's decided to put it there, which it didn't even ask. So let's cut and paste it into source and remove from there and then add existing. Kind of annoying that. So there's our name. Actually include IO stream in the name. So see out hello world. Um, let's just uh, make it pause by putting a C in. It's just building. Okay, boost is downloaded, so we can cut it from there and we can paste it into here and then start extracting it, extract it here. That's created boost underscore 176 or 1670. We'll actually move this in a moment, rename it and leave it as we see fit. So let's leave that extracting. We can close that out. And that's finished building. So we'll just check. Hello world. We can exit. Now we go back into properties. Now we've got the C tab. I'm changing the language. I'm going to go for at least C14. I don't want 17 yet. There's some bits I don't want to touch on Visual Studio, not because I don't use C17, just because I don't like the Microsoft. Okay, so now we'll pop back here and we need to grab these two files. So we're going to save this file as U Boost Beast Source, and that's called fields alloc.hpp. I'm going to save this one as and this is the HTTP server fast. And we can actually get rid of our main again and then add existing and add the two files we just downloaded. Now they won't build right now because we've, we've not included boost properly. So um, we'll actually leave that as 167. So let's go back to project and we'll go into general, include directories, back a directory from the where the project lives. So the project's in here. So we go back one directory and then start saying boost underscore one six seven zero. 
and then anything we include with boost will be in these header folders here. So we can apply that. And the same goes for the linker, where we set the linker. This now needs to be dot plot slash. We go back a level boost underscore one six seven zero slash boost stage lib. Now it isn't boost stage lib, it's actually just stage lib which we'll create. So we can take the boost. So back a level boost one six seven naught stage lib. That's fine. We need to build boost. And the first thing you need to know about boot building boost is to Google for the boost invocation page. And you'll find these lovely examples here. This table here under properties is the key bit. So we go to Visual Studio under Visual Studio Tools, and we'll find the developer command prompt. There's the developer command prompt. We want to browse to the U drive to that folder. So U uh, on cd boost beast cd boost and we bootstrap so we're bootstrapping the build boost with those tools this will take a moment it does take a while to build as well hence we're going to be doing things to the code while we're waiting for this to build and i'm going to have a quick drink There we go. So now, with B2, we apply whichever of these we want. Now, for speed, I'm going to build debug, I'm going to build static, I'm going to build multi. <coughs> Excuse me. For speed, I'm going to build debug, I'm going to build static, I'm going to build multi, I'm going to build 32 bit only, I don't really care about the pitting, and I'm going to have runtime like static. So, B2. Variant equals debug, link equals static, uh, threading equals multi, dress model equals 32, and runtime link is static. That's going to start building boost for me. Exactly the same applies in Linux. If you download and install Linux or have Linux, you want to build boost, you do exactly the same things and it will work exactly the same way, it's a cross-platform library. So they're identical, they're both identical. Right, we'll leave that building for a while, and we can actually pop to here, and we'll now see stage lib, which is the folder I said would appear. And we can already see system has appeared, which is the only one we need. So I'm just going to copy the file name, go to properties, go to input, edit input and paste that in there. Now we're, we're adding this in, but it's a static debug, SGDB, static debug. So is this building static debug right now? We're under code generation, C plus under code generation, we can see no, it's looking for the DLL. So we change this to multi-threaded debug, not DLL, and it will use that as a static library. Now we can do a test build. We've got a class missing. What have we got missing? Oh, it's it's downloaded it in HTTP. That's a bit silly. So let me go to history. File fast. Open. I guess you've got to copy the code. Copy the code. Now, which one was that one? So that was fields alloc. So that's now looking like code. That's really silly that I right clicked and saved on these and they're actually called .hpp and .cpp but downloaded HTML. That's really daft. And, and this is some of the things that really annoy me about Boost. I love Boost, I really do like it. But it annoys me how odd and obscure some of the things are. The coding standard is really why this video exists. Now, I have my own coding standard, which we're going to learn, we're going to talk about in this video. So now we're set up, we've got a clean build. It doesn't matter that Boost is still building in the background. I've got plenty of horsepower to actually do my development and let Boost build, but that's, that's done. We only needed the system lib because 
Beast is a header-only implementation. Well, it is, but it needs the lib system from Boost as well. So I opened and closed instantly. So we need to just look at main. We have some parameters as to which folder it's going to open. So we will actually have a new folder called HTML. And I will add a file called index.html. And I will edit this file. HTML, end HTML, header, title, hello world, end title, end head, body, header one, hello world, end header one, end body. Okay, so that is now our path you boost beast HTML. And according to this, we need to tell it which IP to bind to, which port to bind on, the folder, and then this other number, 100 block. So we will go to properties, and this time we're going to go to debugging, command arguments. We're going to bind to any interface on port 80 to that folder, 100 block. Now we will rebuild, it's OK. We're running, we're going to allow it access to my firewall. So there's the program. Let's open a browser. Got type 127.0.0.1. Let's see what we see. We get file not found, we get something. So the dot root folder file does nothing in this code. I already know that. So let's go for index.html. Hello world. So the server is working. This program is working. Okay, so that's our first steps with Boost Beast. Okay, so we'll actually just minimize that. Close this program. Now we're going to look at actually improving the code. I want to learn about Boost Beast. And main could be where we start, but it's not going to be. The first thing I want to do is get rid of the use of these namespaces because they're obfuscating away which part of Boost some things live in. Now, I use Boost a lot. I use the standard template library a lot. If you're going to do this, do it consistently. Don't do this and then do this. Because you're happy to use the namespace here, but not happy to use it here. For maintainability's sake, Unless you're in a local scope that stays on the screen in one go, my coding standard says do not use a namespace filler. This is what I call a filler. It's actually a, you know, a, a using statement, a minimizer, a, a concatenation for you. I don't like it. So we'll take it off. We'll take the IP off and we'll see what red lines appear here when we do a build. Not many, but look at it so far. So none. So so this is again why <laughs> why the boost examples annoy me. There's no reason to do this. There's there's no reason to have that there because it didn't affect the code at all. Let's see if TCP does. I think TCP does. I did, there we go. So TCP immediately has popped up some things. So what we're going to do is we're going to control H. And we're going to replace TCP colon with what I thought I copied, which is boost TCP colon colon. Change them all, six occurrences. Where do we get to? And all the red lines have gone away again now. Let's do a test build. So it's mainly this, look, it's mainly stuff like that that got changed for that. There we go. But as I don't know Boost Beast, is there a Boost Beast TCP? And could I have been confusing Boost ASIO IP TCP with Boost Beast TCP? I don't know because I don't know what I'm doing yet. And now we'll do the same with HTTP. There we go. We can see the red markers for several of them. We can replace HTTP colon with Boost Beast HTTP. 30 occurrences changed. 30 occurrences are gone. We've got a clean build again. Uh, 
how it's built. There we are. Does it still work? Let's go back to our let's just test hello.txt, which we know doesn't exist. File not found. Test index HTML, which is found. So we're all good. It still works. Okay, now we can just start having a look at it. I'm not going to look at fields alloc right now. I'm going to leave that alone. Um, but we're going to wash the code from top to bottom. We're going to look at what's going on. So what does this do? It's a bit mangled. So return a reasonable MIME type based on the file extension. Okay. So first of all, I always want the type in line to the left even if it's a long thing. Also, this seems to be a self-contained function. So I want this to return const. I also want it to take a const reference to the string view because that's my coding standard. Yes, you can trust C++ move semantics, but I don't. Well, I do, but I don't. Next, we've got another namespace this seems to be affecting just this which is fine um, I don't mind that per se at the moment so we'll leave that but I don't know if this will affect anything in here so we'll actually move it to where it seems to be pertinent which is the other side and we'll put a type there now my coding standard uses uh, structured programming so there are multiple return points from here I don't like that, so we're going to go for boost beast string view result. So it's empty, and the first one's going to be the default, which is just application text, and then it's going to always return result. Okay, let's just move that now. So what about all these other returns? Well, highlight section, return quote becomes L result equals quote. There we go. They've all stayed lined up for us nicely. That's all fine. We've got one exit point. It's fine. It's a bit wasteful though. So if we move that above that one, because HTML will begin with HTM. Um, just in case we ever do a ends with or contains at end. Pretty much each of these now becomes if becomes else if. Like that. So now the code should just patter through a bit easily. Um, if we've done one, we it was going to return. You'd never do the next. But this code now, because you will always do the next, we've got to go else if. Um, and are there any here that I want to make usable and there are so i want to add cpp i want to add h and i want to add hpp because i want to return uh, code as, as text um, there we go they're all lined up they've gone out of line here so we will we will decide what the longest one is that would be perhaps that one. Okay, so they're all two spaces. So, so maybe that one. So let's in this section. Let's replace space space l result with. tab l result. I didn't want to do that. Uh, it's a bit annoying. So we're just tidying up. That's all I'm doing. This is coding standard for maintainability for me. It could they could stay where they are, but I prefer them to move.
in the long run, of course, what I might do is make that this list of valid extensions loadable from some uh, file. But right now we're we're fine. We don't need that. Okay, next, let's look at this piece of code here. So I don't like this constant of an so an auto constant. So it's a constant thing that's of unknown type called extension is a reference to it takes reference to path through this function this is a, a lambda so the lambda is going to reverse find the dot so it's going to move from the end of the string up into it and find the last dot cut from there if it if it found it or, or to return I say I, I don't like this at all so this should be a function in its own right so this should be const standard string get extension from file name const uh, boost beast string view reference path okay so here we see I did local result so that's what this means to me this is again part of my coding standard notice that isn't in line this is parameter path so I could reuse L path here and not confuse the two. I know what they're doing. I, I know their scope. Some people hate this. Some people like this. Trust me, over time, that has a real, real use. Um, it's not Hungarian notation. Links below to my blog post about that. So string L result is empty. Return result. And then we go if not path empty. And then we go auto pos is the path dot r find the dot if pos not equal p path. Uh, it's, uh, sorry, boost beast string view no pause so if it's not if it has been found it's not no pause if it's found no result equals path substring uh, l pause so I create the string so I create the substring and get it to string to put it into this return. I don't know much about string view. This may become a string view, a, bo a boost be string view soon, but not for now. So this to me is a lot better because I have one entry point, one exit point. I have a check and one function to perform. This is, if you're showing some, some, someone something for the first time, that is utter and total overkill. So auto extension. Is going to call get extension uh, get extension from file name path. I'm actually going to call that p path because that's what I do. So we've got lx. I'm going to get rid of that code and then in here. We're going to replace x with l x, and it seems that that being an std string is fine. That can actually be a const. So it's a const auto. I prefer const auto than auto const, unless you're working with pointers. It doesn't actually make a difference to the meaning of, of that value, or at least practically it doesn't. And we misalign things again, so we'll realign them. So now I think. This just needs a better name, so get mime type, and we will just build, and there's one occurrence, one use of that function, which is here, get mime type. Wish I could type myself, there we go. There we go, the, the boost build is actually completed, so we can exit that developer tag now. So you'll see in boost stage lib, there's a whole bunch of stuff. If you were going to distribute your system um, and weren't static linking, um, you'd have to copy the DLLs that came out of here. 
to your runtime. So if we go to server proj debug, you'll see that the program is just under two and a half megabytes. Well, if I'm not static linking, the DLLs would have to be here. Your program would be a lot smaller. But I prefer to static link. This one exe can now be carried off somewhere with no problem. But you're limited. You can't update to a new version of Boost. It's, it's fine for me for this. Anyway, so we've now got a new function we've created. We've now got an entire get mime type. Um, and we're starting to see some of the coding standard. Um, I now know that this this i equals check if equals some sort of boolean. It returns a bool if the left hand side and the right hand side you know is is within there in some way or or the whole string matches. I could certainly use that in other code. I've learned something there. I need to. Uh, maybe use what this is about. So this is a case comparison operation defined for low ASCII characters. Perhaps wouldn't work best with um, UTF-8 and things like that, but ASCII is the standard interfacing encoding for HTTP gets and requests and, and responses, so it's fine. Um, we have a default value, we have a single return point, we have a new function which is much, much clearer than that very obscure lambda. Um, it perhaps doesn't look as fancy. This is, oh, vanilla, anyone can understand it. But that's the point, anybody can understand it. Was that lambda? A little bit off the wall. And this is meant to be a simple example. So what's the next thing we've got to look at? Well, we're going to skip down to the bottom and look at main and look at how it's using things. So straight away, I put P's on the parameters, and if we haven't got six parameters, we, we exit fail. Um, well, I don't like that, so we'll go else. I will go to the end of the stanza and do this. So we're also catching the exception. It's a local exception, so I actually call it LEX, LEX. Um, we return there. Well, you don't need to return in a, in a C++ program, so that's absolutely fine to just let that run out of scope. Okay, now we're going to go prgv, 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 prgv. So we're going to look at these five lines of code. Um, First things first, we've got an A to I. I don't like that. Um, I would much prefer a boost lexical cast. So hash include boost lexical cast. And we will then have try boost lexical cast int p argv4 so num workers equals and we will default this to zero or oh, maybe minus one and we have to catch const boost bad lexical cast blc bad lexical cast error Num workers cast failed. Uh, that's all we need to say, really. Uh, we, we just don't want to output the uh, error randomly. BLC dot what? I was not happy with SDLC error. Duh. Okay, and then we go if. L num. So again, I need to make this L number of workers because I don't like that at all. I'm using semi Pascal with the scoping thing and camel casing. It works for me. It's what I prefer to see. Some people will hate it, some people will love it. But We'll see. So number of workers greater than zero. I assume we need 
some number of workers. So that's the fourth parameter. So that was one, two, three. So naught is the path of the program. One is this IP, two is this port, three is the path, and four is the number of workers. So it has to be greater than zero, I presume. And if it is, we run the actual program. We go into here. If not, we don't. Okay. So this is a lot better for me to read. I prefer it. Now, it's more lines of code than S td a to i but a to i will accept and land here whereas this keeps it local to me so l number of workers and this is initialized like that what's the difference between int equals something and int bracket something bracket well i'm trying to make sure that everybody and everything i do is a conforming to RAII, whose source acquisition is initialization. Initializing the integer to something, just int i, and then go int i equals four, is trivial. It might be very fine, it's, it's absolutely no problem. On most compilers, they will initialize int to four immediately. Well, not on all of them. So I want to make sure that I always initialize i to zero here, and it's never any other value if we were threaded off somewhere else or we were interrupted or whatever. So this is all this is doing. It's just making sure that it's created and initialized. We go through the integer constructor with an with a value. Okay. So what's this doing? This is getting us the IP address from this parameter. Um, this will, if there's an error, catch here. So I, I, I'm fine with that. Again, though, I'm not happy with the order of that. So const auto address and boost things are a bit awkward for this, this creating, but we want to go through the constructor, this constructor from this value. We're not assigning, we're going through a constructor. Uh, we've got a static cast A to I on the sign short. Well, we're going to go try and we go unsigned short L port is zero, which is an invalid port, and we're going to go L port equals type now L port equals boost lexical cast unsigned short P arg V two, and then we catch const if boost bad lexical cast the lc port stdc error bad port provided lbc port dot watch and by this goes away so we're not casting in here the castings are done for us here comes in and we need to make sure the port is not zero. So we go if port not equal to zero, or uh, well, greater than zero. And we should really make it not greater than some other invalid values, but we don't care for now. So we're carrying on running into a tree of calls. Now, some people hate this, that it pushes the standards out, but those standards make for good functional programming considerations later. Um, this is an assignment. It's the document root. So this is L document root. And we will just wash that through. So this is L document root. And this is L port. Okay, so we've now got check on the number of parameters or an output of help. So this could go in a function called print help. So void print help. And annoyingly, this is not standard error. 
this is standard error. It's not an error. So don't print it to your error. It's not an error for the person to just need help. And now we go print help. So code's getting smaller all the time. So now we need to look at what this is doing. And this is putting things together for us. We've got an address. So L address. Just correct that. L address. So from the parameters, we're getting an address, a port, and a number of workers in a document group. Well, struct server start details. And we've got boost hasio IP address. Okay? So this is the address. We're making a const. And then we've got const unsigned short the port. Now, why am I not adding m underscore? I'm not adding m underscore because everything in a struct is publicly visible. And I want to just go service.details dot whatever and not go dot m underscore because then members are privately held or protectively held within the class or struct. Publicly available things that are const, I can just give a name, they're like an accessor in other languages. And I'm not going to line, I could, in my coding standard, you could, that's perfectly valid as well. Perfectly valid. Um, what else do we need then? Uh, document root was a const standard string, document root. And the last one was number of workers, which is an integer. Const int number of workers. Okay, so we want to create a server start details. Server start details. And it's going to take char pointer arguments bracket. And it's going to do these things for us. So this check has guaranteed that we're going to have at least six positions so address is going to be initialized to arguments one like so okay port will be from the lexical cast Like so. Document root will be just the argument finally number of workers will be the number of workers Arguments three. Arguments four. So I've now got a structure that can do this for me. Let's just move it to here. I, that's a lot more neat and tidy for me. Um, so I can get rid of most of this stuff. We can get rid of all of that code and go server start details L SSD P arg V. But of course we can't. We need to do something else. Let's take away all the braces. That of course can throw the bad lexical casts. So we need to go try. Catch, const boost, bad lexical cast, BLC, SCD, C error, error, parsing, server start port workers, L, BLC, not watch, and line. Okay? 
And this now needs, of course, to use. Oh, we've not done arg5. <laughs> we need to uh, just do arg5 in a second. So this is out ssd dot address. And this is out ssd dot port. SSD, not SDD. Now SSD dot number of workers. SSD dot document root. Okay, the final one, of course, we need to just add this spin. So spin is argument five. So const bool spin. And so the comma there, spin is. That code there. Argument five is spin. Spin has to be lowercase. Get rid of spin there. And then spin is lssd dot spin. So we've, we've tidied this up. This is how we start our server. It's a lot simpler to turn these parameters into this. It's highly maintainable, not a fractured piece of code. And we've simplified the function of code. It's a lot more readable now. Okay, and we can actually comment only land here if SSD is not initialized properly or some other value from there in. Um, one trick I've seen done is having um, a hidden Boolean, a private Boolean that says invalid or valid, and it's initialized negatively in the constructor list. And then only if you run through the constructor body does that flag become true. Um, it's it's functional, but I don't like doing that. So it would look something like this: private bool m valid, and they they say m valid is false, and only if they go through there m valid is true. So they they're then able to um, provide uh, this is. M public constructor and they provide const bool reference valid return and valid so const like this so they could then call dot valid on ssd and know if it's valid or not i don't like that personally but it's an option obviously you could make it a um, an atomic bool if you wished, um, but because I'm sticking to RAII, I will let this uh, throw the exception. It's not meant to be no except. It is that is a way of making it no except. Um, I suppose it's not really you need to catch all the all the bad decimal casts from these internally. But there you go. So what have we got? We've got the IO context, which is initializing to one IO context. Well. LIO context. Let's give it a more meaningful name. This is clearly more complex than it appears to be. So let's clear things up. LIO context, comma, and this is taking something else that's made up of the address and port. That's a lot more readable to me. Um, this is fine, it's trivial, but this was not trivial and it was a bit hard to read. So what's L acceptor? So we need to, this is going to accept TCP connections on this context, on the address and port we've, we've given. And let's rename it to L acceptor with a capital A. Um, so this is not what I would do. So what this is doing is this runs once if we're going to continually serve or we serve one once and close. So what we're going to do is our IO context on run runs once. And I always have brackets in my statements. So we're going to update that. And I don't ever do loops like that. Don't like them to look like that. So while in fact we do do Io context of poll while and I never want it to be a true really we should have some master flag for this 
Um, otherwise, we could, you know, be closing the program and leaving all this stuff leaking and messy all over the place. Um, I'd like to have some button or command that closes it even when it's spinning. It's out of the scope of what we're learning here. So we've cleaned up the iron context, we've cleaned up the acceptor construction. So it's taking the context and it's creating the TCP IP protocol. So that's what it's actually creating. I could move that into its own thing. So TCP as a IP TCP protocol is there. So it's from the address and the port. List of workers. List of workers, our workers, um, we're in placing back HTTP worker, obviously has a constructor of acceptor and document root. Workers.back.star, so it's calling start on the created um, acceptor. So we're actually going to go. HTTP worker candidate L acceptor L SSD document root because I want to create candidate and I want to make sure we don't run out of memory for whatever reason. So catch const std bad alloc. Uh, we don't actually care about the exception, we know it's a C error. We, we know what it is. Um, out of memory for workers. This is the only point I'm really caring about, creating memory. We could, of course, do that. Same check here and catch a specific exception here, but this will catch everything that's a problem. Um, but if we run out of memory creating new ones, we just want to break we don't want to actually stop the whole thing running. We want to just say, well, there's not enough. Um, and then this candidate itself could start through an exception. Um, so we want to go try candidate.start. And if it doesn't, then we'll go l place back candidate. You see? So we're only going to add it to the list if we've successfully created it and successfully started it. Uh, see, error. Error starting worker. There we go. So let's see if that now still builds, which it should. Have a oh, I see. Okay, so STD worker, HTTP worker doesn't have a constructor that takes an acceptor or a document root. Well, I know HTTP worker is up here. And it does take an, an acceptor, and it does take a document root. So that's not a deleted function. Let's just do that a second, rebuild. Um, let's just some warning as well. So don't want that. Attempting to reference a deleted function. Oh, it's because we're adding. push back. They were in placing it in position. I don't want to end place on to just push the existing one on. 
attempting to reference, so I can't copy it. There's no copy constructor. Why is there no copy constructor? I don't want to copy. So I want to move it into place. Still not happy. Just going to try this. So creating it as a pointer should let me not go through. the whole list of construction again. Yeah, so that's not ideal. Um, basically because we're deleting, or this is deleting its copy constructor, we couldn't push it or emplace it on the back of a list. Um, this leads, or could lead to heap corruption in, in certain circumstances where you're taking copies of things you thought you'd already started running and things like that. Um, it, it's also a bit obscure, of course, that they were pushing back with the bracketed initializer there. Um, I, personally, I wouldn't do that, so I'm not going to when I've changed the code. But I don't like naked pointers either. Okay, do not like them. Uh, that will leak memory. So we're going to sort that out when we come and deal with HTTP worker. Um, we need to make sure up here that we're using memory, which we are. So HTTP worker is a, a class. Well, first of all, we're going to change its name to worker. And we're going to predefine it, pre-declare it. And we're going to do HTTP worker pointer equals STD shared pointer HTTP worker. Okay, and I don't want, I don't care that they're public per se, but I don't want them to be polluting the public segment of my class. So, HTTP worker, bracket, const, well, see, this is a const reference, so that's okay to be that way around. Um, but I don't do it that way around. It's a const worker reference, but it is perfectly valid to have worker constant reference. It's, it's just semantics. I prefer that way because I'm an English speaker and I say it's a constant something, something else. So in French, it's quite obvious you'd say uh, vin rouge, so wine red. But in English, you say red wine. And that's why I put const something reference. I don't go something constant reference. They're the same thing for me. Um, same here. It's a const HTTP worker reference and we're deleting them both anyway. Uh, there is no copy constructor. There should be no default constructor either now. We delete this. So publicly, I only want people to be able to call this actual constructor and get a pointer wrapped copy of the whole thing. P acceptor, bringing this up to spec, P document root. Okay, and I absolutely deplore this. So this should not be this, this should be member acceptor so that is member acceptor is the parameter acceptor silly thing gone uh, the same for document root it should be m document root not document root underscore it becomes p document root and the only way to get at this should be through a static 
HTTP worker pointer create that takes two of these and in fact that should be constant well, it shouldn't be we, we, we do change that reference that's fine and this returns a HTTP worker pointer new HTTP worker P acceptor P document root. So why not make shared? Well, because this is private. I don't want anybody to see this, and because that's private, uh, you can't access it. You can make this in, in Visual Studio on Windows, you can make this class a friend of the ref count inside a shared pointer, and that allows this to use make shared and therefore access this, uh, or allows make shared to access this constructor in the private segment of the class, but only on Windows and only in Visual Studio. So I do it this way because this is cross platform. Um, the start function needs a capital S. It needs indenting. The function accept and check deadline need naming differently. Privates need aligning. And we've got this using alloc type fields char. Well, I don't like to define that inside there. I like to know it exists everywhere. So we'll put that there. And now we need to just wash these out. So, um, acceptor. Okay, we've got the document root. So, socket gets created here. I don't like that. So, m underscore socket. And I don't like that being like that. So, what does that do? Well, socket is going to create like this. So we get the acceptor, get executor to get context. Because we're following RAII. Uh, and then it's got buffer. Static flat reference buffer. That's, unfortunately, that's going to have to stay like that. Allocated using the field request and reply. So M underscore alloc going to have to become 8192 up here, alloc it's fine, so what have we got next, so we have a parser, so that needs to be m underscore parser, and we've got this deadline, so this is m request deadline is actually this function acceptor get executor context then the clock so it's doing two things and um, what we're going to do is move this up to the constructor here Allocate thus. So the request deadline is accepted there. And now this is just semicolon. Message body is a string type response. M string response. String serializer. M string. Serializer file response is m file. Oops, file response. So these are optional things. We'll, we'll look at optional stuff as we go along. File serializer. Okay, so here's the first function the accept function. 
So this takes M socket close M buffer consume M buffer dot size M acceptor async accept on M socket and then we've got this parameter we call accept on it and we've got M request deadline expires after 60 seconds we could make that a const expression I suppose but I won't we'll pick a const expression this performs read request which is this function sorry that's um that's a lambda obviously um, I want to just align the lambda like this just so I can tell that this is a functional lambda I could even assign that to be um, an auto the function here or even another function elsewhere which is fine but I don't mind lambdas I'm, I'm quite happy with lambdas so now we go m underscore parser in place two four four m alloc which is eight one nine two um, I don't know if that changes so we'll we'll see what that is if that can be const we will make it const uh, m socket m buffer pointer to m par or d reference to m parser this is another lambda read it up um, I always have these here, so we're going to always have them here. I don't know why. See, even, this is an example code. Why? Because there, you've got braces, and here they didn't. It's inconsistency. It doesn't help people learn your library. Um, it, it kind of annoys me. Function process request. And pause and get. And here's the function for process request and this is going well off the screen so we're going to break it up like so so we can see what they are I'll move the cons to this end so I can see we edit that this is actually let me just undo that just reread it so this is a tuple request request body request fields alloc t that's really really horrible it's this isn't a separate parameter this is all one parameter don't like that i don't like how big it is going off the screen like that so p request switch p request dot method so if it's a get request we go send file p request target so that's the url coming in otherwise we send a bad response invalid request request method which we should never see on P request, uh, which we should never see because we're always using a browser to do our little tests with. Send bad response. Send bad response. So send bad response and places M string response, the member. with 8k of stuff so we can change string response underscore to end string response that's fine uh, m string serializer and in placing the pointer to what we've just built so let's just have a look at what it built so the response result is the status we pass in, which is the response status for our request response pairing in HTTP. 
I'm going to assume, therefore, there that there's all sorts of different statuses available in that enumeration. Okay, and we then say we're not keeping the socket alive to the browser. We then say what kind of server it was. It was beast. We say what kind of file it is. Well, it's plain text because this is a bad response. It's a plain text MIME type. We could define this in the above function. We say the body is whatever error came in. And we prepare the payload. So let's just correct the names there. Error. And I'm sure that could actually be a const reference p status p error. Oh, error that's fine so send file we'll sort out in a second so what does this then do well it does an async write to the socket from the string serializer which is what we've then placed this here with this lambda and this lambda does a shutdown, this seems backwards to me, it shuts down after this synchronous write, it shuts down the socket because we're done with it, it resets the string serializer which is been used here and it clears the response because the next request will need to clear and use a different response and then it starts accepting again calls accept again so we go back up to here which starts an async accept okay async accept okay send file which is error in here for us send file which is the meat and bones of what we're doing here so this should really be a const reference to the, the target. It's just a path, really. It's just a path. So if if p target is empty or p target is just the current folder or p target is a previous folder. So if, you, if they're trying to navigate around back prior to where we put them, uh, we don't want them to. So if they're in this folder here, we don't want them able to browse this folder. It's, it, that's to stop them doing that. So what that does is call send bad response. Oh, what does that do? Response. And then it returns. But we don't want to return. We will do our single exit point. We're going to jump to the bottom of the function. It's all in dense for us. So now we're going to go, if any of these conditions, bad response. Just file not found. They just, you can't do that. We could be more specific, like with this one, we could tell them, stop it. We've noted your IP address, stuff like that. So full path. This is a bit odd. So this is, full path is M document root and we append the target data so they're appending this as if it's a file name to the full path and there's no checking of this there's no checking whether it exists or anything like that which we'll come back to so it's assuming file body type file it opens the file and reads the whole thing So this is just reading the whole file for us. I'd actually like that to be that way around, just to be clear that lec is the error code and the file is what's being read. And we don't like this, so local full path local full path local full path and we could send more information out here or whatever but 
we'll just let it do its thing for now. Send bad response, file not found in return, we don't want that. Else, add another layer. And again, all these braced pieces all become chances to functionalize. So this and this are the same code. So we can go void, send bad file response. Okay. Braces. And that's this code. Once send bad file response. And then that code is identical to that code. This is functional programming, and then using this is, is structured programming. These are all very old practices that are being ignored and being left alone. So, m file response, it emplaces a piecewise construct of alloc. So, I presume that's in case they're streaming the file in. M underscore file response underscore so uh, I don't know what I've done there, let's undo that. There we go. File response underscore and we'll just do uh, file response underscore becomes M file response. So we are saying that it's an okay result. We found the file. We are not keeping the connection alive to the browser. Again, telling it what server. Again, telling it what mime type. We call our function we created at the top, which is getting us the mime type. Um, I notice as well, this is using to string. So we can immediately jump up here, change this to const string. Result is std string. It now returns const string and we can go in here and get rid of target so that's getting everything as we want it uh, we then move the file standard and move the contents of the file into the body we just dump it there so we've, we've done this we dump it there and it prepares the payload which is then going to serialize the file out pointed to the file response and it's going to then write it on the socket with this lambda which is m underscore socket, which will shut down and then reset the file serializer, the file response object, and call accept again. And the final function, which is causing this error up here, is check deadline which is, I'm going to assume, checking the expiry time. So the deadline may have moved, so check if it's really passed. I don't know quite what that's doing right now. So if the expiry is less than or equal to now, close the socket, cancel any outstanding operation. So this is just a another function that's checking. Sleep indefinitely until we're given a new deadline. Okay. And what this does is do an async wait on this lambda which calls check deadline again. So it's just checking for any dead deadheading any connections. Um, I find it quite odd they've done that with this callback timer when elsewhere they've done stuff with lambdas. So, yeah, it's strange. 
Okay, and we've got some red dots down here. What's this done? So, HTTP worker pointer auto candidate is HTTP worker create on the acceptor on the document group. Okay, and now if candidate candidate start candidate. So we've cleaned up the worker class. So let's just go over it again. What do we want to do? All of these using this type. So this is a type. And that could be a const expression. Um, I don't know, kk byte. To be an int, I guess. KK byte. So now that's a KK byte. So it's a megabyte. <laughs> it's a megabyte. Um, let me just change it to a megabyte. So worker is now wrapped in a nice class. We've hidden the constructors away. Uh, because we've hidden the constructors away, we need to create a factory create, a static create function. We've moved all the member allocation to RAII in the constructor. They all get something here rather than in the body. Um, we could do with moving all of these members above. I would actually always have the members here then the constructors, so the members should really go about there, but we'll leave them where they are for now. Uh, we've then got private accept function, private bad, uh, private read request function, uh, private process request, private send bad response, uh, a helper function send bad file response that's used a couple of times. Um, we could then, you know, we could move this into its own function and whatever, whatever, whatever. You can functionalize your code to help maintain ability as you go uh, and the check deadline's doing its thing so then we print help print server details let's see if everything still works i'm hoping after recording for nearly an hour it is all still fine and let's go to here and let's go for file not found index html it's downloaded index html now instead of showing it me that's a bit strange why is it downloading it rather than showing it because before it showed it in the uh, in the screen didn't it Longer than that. That's nothing to do with this code. I right, click sublime down there. So let's now break point there and break point there. It's something about this, isn't it? It's something we've changed in here, or is it the mime type? change it doesn't know what mime type to use and that does need to therefore be uh, boost b string view so let's just put that back to boost b string view and make this a boost b string view and then just disable any way points because I'm going to come back and tick we start the server after a build. Um, I've got a funny feeling it downloaded the file because of the mime type. So now we go back in here. File not found. It's still downloading the file. So let's enable this breakpoint and see what happens when we go to slash index. 
What did you intend for that to happen? It's landed here. That's really not what I wanted to happen. I didn't think it was going to do anything. Stop. String view. Build. And let's just get that ready. That might just be Chrome being Chrome, actually. It's trying to be clever that it really should by getting the file as soon as it can. So we've got slash index.html and it's found a mime type of lxhtml. And it doesn't know what to do with lx html. So what have I done? Oh, yeah, there is something wrong with my type. It's um, <laughs> it's it's changed those values there. Why didn't you say? So tlx slash html should be text slash html. So when I change the names of those, it changed the names of those. So when I changed X to LX, it changed X to LX there. That was one there as well. So let's rebuild. Take the breakpoint off. It is just the mime type. Nothing to do with the code. It was just the mime type. That bug in the code. It's nothing to do with the actual change that we just done to HTTP worker. Let's build my output. Now we're running. File not found. Slash index. There's hello world. So that's our cleaned up code. I will post this to GitHub. Link will be below. And I hope you've enjoyed this hour long following along with me loading a bit of boost beast through my wetware to see what's going on. Um, we haven't done everything we could. This has still got a horrible name. This has still got a horrible name. Um, this is should be. Uh, in my coding standard, that would be a constant. So C underscore for constant, but we've left it. Um, this is certainly better. I would much prefer to see RAII being followed. Um, I would also always like to see a function have a, 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 an entry point and an exit point. Um, I find that moving things into their own functions is helpful. This could be a lot neater. This is obviously a lot nicer that you've got your own structure to do server start details and we could start to move these off. In fact we'll just do that. So header file, add new item, browse, source. So this is a header file called server start details dot h and hash not define server start details hash define server start details why not the pragma once because not every um, server uh, every compiler uses that and we can cut and we can paste and yes we need to include the right pieces let's just split our tab group just maximize this. So we need boost as IO and we need string. Uh, we need let's cast. But we don't need let's put cast in here because we're not done yet. We don't need that public, it's all public. And we actually going to copy this. And this will now include server start details or h. We will add source file server start details cpp. Actually include server start details and the constructor will live there. And we only need to include lexical cast. 
can hear any strange noises, it's just the neighbors. So this is how we can start cleaning up our code and making sure everything is good and neat and tight and maintainable. We can close that tab now. Um, so server start details is coming from the other file. Um, there we go, we're still built. Okay, links all below. I'll include a link to my blog post about non-Hungarian notation use of these scoping. This is scoping naming. Uh, structural programming, you'll find many, many books about it. You'll find it, it's a grand old tradition to have one entry or an exit point. It, some people used to rave about it and demand it. I certainly demand it. You will find functional programming where I've split functions off. It's just, I can carry on with this, carry on making it more useful, giving things useful names and splitting things over lines rather than just them pressing out. It's always really important. It's very important when it comes to the parameters. So here's a parameter list. I can see that as a parameter list. That's why I do this in my code because I know I've got something, it's initialized with some value, it's coming out with these parameters. I can see what's going on. It's perfectly valid to have them all in one line because we, we have all this space now. But when I started programming, you didn't have all this space. Um, also, this allocation stops the pushback here needing the copy constructor or the assignment copy constructor. You don't need it, so don't expose it. Don't, don't let people play about with your code. This is strongly intimating now that you cannot create one, you cannot copy one, you cannot assign one. And you can't even make one validly. You have to get it wrapped in a pointer, a, a, a smart pointer of that, a shared pointer of that. Um, you could make it whatever kind of pointer you want. You could you could even make it a naked pointer and make your code remember to call delete. I don't do that. Uh, again, we don't want wild trues really, but we're letting it in this case be a wild true. We want We'd really want some exit ability. Um, we could even have it such that uh, when you close off uh, a socket or, or a request with reset, would set some flag that said quit, and then this would be while not quit, just as a hidden way of closing the server down remotely. Certainly, this is how I'm starting to think about RESTful APIs through this, uh, as I've gone through this. Um, these parameters here, this actual namespacing, I would, by preference, do this just so it becomes more readable. So that's a type and I would even make that uh, a using statement here so that I have a type I can make sense of. Um, you know, I might have string response types. Let's actually try that. Let's just copy that there using string response type equals that whole gubbins of stuff. And then this is string response type. Just check that builds. Which it does. Run the code. Hello world. And we got index. And I would do that for this. I would do it for this. I would do it for that. I would do it for that. Because they are horrible. That is horribly, horribly, horrible to read. But that takes it out of the system, takes it out of the way. Um, in fact, let's just do that before I quit copy string serializer type using string serializer type equals that whole gubbins of stuff so boost optional let's do it like this Boost optional, boost response serializer, boost body allocator t. And we know allocator t is there. Uh, semicolon. Oh, 
I didn't expect to do that. That's, that's more readable. Definitely more readable. Uh, we've got parser type. Parser type. It should be above them. Using parser type equals boost optional. Boost beast. Request type, allocator type, go on. So I like that much more string serializer type than what happened with that. String serializer, serializer type. I typed something wrong there, obviously. Uh, file response type. Definitely something wrong there. File response type. So using file response type equals optional boost beast. Boost beast stuff. And then the allocator type will be there. Finally, this great thing, the file serializer type. So, dot file serializer type. Using file serializer type equals, and of course, all of these usings, instead of polluting the code here, they're not, well, they're not polluting, they're just, I mean, look, they, they're just, in the way and ugly. These could be up in a types header. You can have your types completely separate. You can use them. Um, you can have your forward declares for these in those types header and then just this in the actual file for them. This would be moved into a header now. The, the guts moved wherever. But yeah, we've got much more readable code here. Much more readable. Even this could be moved to a type. And it's got a meaningful name. And you'll find that if you unroll certain things through Clang, some of the LLVM tools, you'll get much better uh, naming of things if you're using this rather than this. What's that? What does that mean to you? Not a lot. I'm trying to learn Boost Beast for the first time, so this means nothing. Whereas that means something. It's a string response type. Oh, it's the optional string response type. Gotcha. It's got a body. It's got a bunch of fields. It's fine. Right. I've been talking for over an hour and a half this is i hope been useful to you please hit that like button if you enjoyed this kind of stuff um, if you want to see more of this about the multiboxer or the wow server this is the kind of code reviewing i'm going to do on it you'll learn more about my coding standard as i do it and you know subscribe stick around bye bye